Good morning, fifth graders. Uh, just wanted to welcome you to week two of your online school of studies. Uh, today we're going to be jumping into the book of Mark in Bible. So um, you can go ahead and get your Bibles out. Open up to page 1070 is where we're going to find Mark 1 start off. Uh, I'm going to pray for us real quick and then we'll, we'll dive into our first worksheet that we have for this Monday. All right, go ahead and bow your heads with me. Let's pray. Uh, Lord God, I thank you for this day. I just thank you how you continue to protect us, Lord. I just pray a hedge of protection over each one of my students. Uh, actually, all the students in the school, Lord, and just over our population as a whole. Uh, just continue to protect and heal people, Lord, and keep us all safe. Uh, we ask that you bless this time of getting into your word today. Amen. All right. So the book of Mark, um, it doesn't spend a lot of time on Jesus's birth and coming up. Uh, the book of Mark is really aimed more at the miracles of Jesus, uh, his life in that part of his ministry, his death and his resurrection, um, like that, that window. Like the book of Mark was written for the Romans. Uh, in this time period, so it was it was a book of a lot of action, real action packed. Get, you know, get them excited and want to read more, which which is awesome. Um, so to start off, so being on page ten seventy, uh, you can put your finger there because we're going to come back and read through that real quick. But first, we're going to look at this worksheet. So it says Gospel of Mark. It's got a Bible at the top. Looks just like this. Um, we're going to read through some of these verses, and I'm going to slide this thing up here. And then I'm going to give you guys a little time to pause the video, get the answers all copied down, and then we'll continue on. Uh, that's when we'll jump into actually reading uh, Mark chapter 1. Cool. Hope you guys are with me. Wake up. If you're still not awake, maybe get up, do some jumping jacks or something like, you know, get up there, get some jumping jacks. You know, get, get pumped up uh, to pay attention. Rock and roll. All right. If I didn't say it enough, I miss you guys. So much easier just chilling with you guys in here and having our conversations and you guys asking your questions and just getting into it. Man, I really, 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 really miss you guys. Um, cool. So looking at our first verse here, we have Acts 12, 12. So I'm going to read through each one of these verses and then we'll go back and fill in the answers. Cool. All right. Hope you're with me. All right. Acts 12, 12, here we go. It says, when he realized this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose other name was Mark, where many were gathered together and were praying. Awesome. So that first one that we'll come back to, that's just that one just told us that, hey, um, the home of Mark's mother was a gathering place for Christians. That's where they all came together to hang out. They'd pray. Um, awesome. Let's look at the next verse. Mark 12, 25. So, on page 1185. You don't have to turn there. I've got them all ready, so just follow along with what I'm reading for you guys. So, 1225 of Acts. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had completed their service, bringing with them John, whose other name was Mark. Awesome. So, Barnabas and Saul came to Jerusalem. They took Mark. He was being a part of their ministry. All right, now, in Acts 13, we're going to look at verses 1 through 5. So in 1 through 5, it says, Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaen, a lifelong friend of Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work for which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on him and sent him off. I think we read that verse before. Uh, but let's look at verse 4. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia. And from there, they sailed to Cyprus. And when they arrived at Salamis, Salamis uh, they proclaimed the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they had John, also named Mark, to assist them. Awesome. So... With that one, John Mark also helped Saul and Barnabas as they preached in Cyprus. So we'll write that down in a few. 
All right, so looking at Acts 13, 13, that's down here a ways. I'll slide this up, I promise. Um, so Acts 13, 13. Let's see, where'd he go? Here we go. Now Paul and his companions set sail for Pamphos and came to Perga in Pamphylia. And John left them and returned to Jerusalem. Ooh, this was, this was kind of like, this caused a little problems with the guys uh, because John left. Uh, or Mark, he left. So he was on a mission trip with them, working with them, and they said, you know what, guys? It's been fun and it's been real, but I'm going to head back to Jerusalem. So he kind of split out and went back. Um, so that causes a little bit of problems later on. Sweet. Now we're going to jump all the way to Colossians. So Colossians chapter 4, verse 10. Uh, starts off with a crazy name. It's Aristarchus. Uh, my fellow prisoner greets you and Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, concerning whom you have received instructions. If he comes to you, welcome him. Okay, so with Colossians 4.10. So Mark was in Rome with Paul while Paul was in prison. Uh, and then also that told us that Mark was a cousin of Barnabas. So we'll copy that down. And if you, I'm going to jump to that next verse down, 2 Timothy 4.11. So it says, Luke alone is with me. Get Mark and bring him with me, for he is very useful to me in my ministry. So Paul requested to Timothy, said, Timothy, hey, bring Mark down here. I want him to be a part of this. Um, so that's awesome. Let's see. Then we're going to jump to Philemon. Now, Philemon is crazy short. It's like, really, it's like one page. Uh, it's split to two in here, but really it's like one whole page long. Uh, so we're going to look at verse 1, and we're going to look at verse 24. So verse 1, Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved fellow worker. And then it jumps to 24, um, or 23, it says, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends greetings to you. And so do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, and Luke, and my fellow workers. Uh, so that verse right there is saying that Mark was present with Paul while he wrote this letter to Philemon. So it kind of be like you guys all hanging out together, and you're texting your buddies, or you're playing a game with each other, like over your internet or whatever, and you say, oh yeah, by the way, like James says, hey, you know, because James is chilling out with you, but he doesn't have a microphone to talk to who else is playing with you guys. So you're like, ooh, James says hi. So right there, Paul's saying, you know, oh yeah, Mark says hi too. Like Mark's here to me. Uh, so that's kind of cool. And then we got 1 Peter 5.13. It says, she who is at Babylon, who is likewise chosen, sends you greetings. And so does Mark, my son. Um, so that one's pretty cool because Peter, Peter had such a close relationship with Mark. He considered him to be like a son. Hopefully that makes sense a little bit. Cool. I'm going to slide this up. I'm going to move my podium out of the way. And I'm going to give you guys a little bit of time to copy that down. Alright guys, so go ahead and just pause your screen right now, hit the pause button, copy all this down, and then once you've got this copied down, go ahead and hit play again, and then I'm going to go ahead and scroll up for the next part. Okay, so hit pause. Cool. So hopefully you hit play again and you're back with me right now. Sweet. So here we go. Uh, go ahead and hit pause one more time. Pause. And then copy all this down once you've paused it. Once you're done, go ahead and hit play again. Cool? All right. All right. Welcome back. Now we're going to read Mark chapter 1. Um, if I already, if you're not done yet, Go back 15 seconds, pause it, finish copying that thing down. So now we're actually going to read through Mark 1. Here we go. <clears throat> so.
So we are on page, I think it was 1070. Let me get there. Yes, it is. Page 1070. Now, we've read a lot of these events already, so I'm going to kind of paraphrase and roll through this with you guys. Um, like the first eight verses of Mark are the baptism of Jesus. Uh, so remember the, the prophecy that was spoken about John the Baptist and how he was going to lead the way for the Messiah. Uh, so in this section, we have John baptizing people in the wilderness. Uh, that's when uh, Jesus comes out and ends up being baptized, starting in verse 9. Um, it says, In those days Jesus came from Nazareth, Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. So awesome. I want to see that like on God too someday, like when I get to heaven and be like, God, can you show me that? I want to see what it was like when Jesus was baptized. Like, oh. You know, like dove coming down. It'd be amazing. And a voice came from heaven, you are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. Um, and then, remember, after the baptism, that's when Jesus is taken out into the wilderness, like, out by himself, and the devil is tempting him, uh, and he tempted him for 40 days, right? Remember that? Um, awesome. And then after that temptation, Jesus begins his ministry. It's what it's talking about in verse 14 15. Um, comes back and he's on fire and he's ready to go now starting in verse 16 that's where we have Jesus calling his first disciples so passing along the Sea of Galilee he saw Simon and Andrew the brother of Simon casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen and remember that Simon that Simon is the one that's also called Peter we've talked about Simon Peter before um, and Jesus said to them follow me and I will make you become fishers of men and immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending their nets. And immediately he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with their hired servants and followed him. Awesome. And then that chapter continues on. And man, it jumps right to... Jesus ministry and his power and his strength and his healing uh, Like man, we just got miracle after miracle right here um, So starting off in verse 21 And they were in Capernaum and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and he was teaching And they were astonished at his teaching for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes Remember the scribes are the ones that are like copying down the Old Testament um, So they knew the Bible but they didn't really have authority in how they were sharing about it. So he was preaching in a way where they're like, wow, this dude has power in the way that he's talking. So that's huge. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know you are the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him saying, be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsed him, and crying out with a loud voice came out of him. And they were all amazed, so they questioned among themselves, saying, Who is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him? And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. Now, here's a crazy thing. like So the, the unclean spirit, the demon inside this man, knew that Jesus was coming to destroy them. He just didn't know when. So he's like, wait, is this it? Is this the time? Is this when you're going to destroy us? And Jesus is like, it's not the time, but you need to be glad. You know, yeah, so that's pretty awesome. So Jesus goes on to heal many people, casting out demon after demon. Uh, he goes in, heals, let's see, I think it was Simon and Andrew's mother-in-law. Um, she was sick, and he, like, goes up, touches her, like, takes away her fever, uh, you know, and then she jumps up and, like, starts, like, waiting on them, like, breathing them food and stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, now, Jesus preaches in Galilee, starting at verse 35. 
uh, said, And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. I love that verse. That shows, like, even Jesus went out to talk to his father. So, you know, we think about praying to God like, you know, he, he's God, he's above us, like we're praying to him. That was Jesus' father. And he would go out and he'd spend time, he'd get, like, by himself and pray just him and God. Him and his father just having to talk, right? It's pretty awesome to think about that way. Um, do that today sometime. Go, go into your room like, a, like yesterday. We kind of talked about shut off everything. Shut off the music. Shut off everything. And just sit and talk to God for a little bit. Tell him what you're, what you're fearing right now. What you're afraid of. Um, tell him what you're excited about. Like, man, this is kind of crazy. This is a trip being at home, having to learn at home. Kind of cool, kind of weird. You know, whatever it is. Talk to God. Just talk to him. Throw it up there. Um, you know, that'd be awesome. And Simon... And those who were with him searched for him, and they found him and said to him, Everyone's looking for you. <clears throat> and he said to them, Let us go to the next towns that I may preach there. Also, for that is why I came out. And he went through all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. Awesome. And then the last section there, Jesus cleanses a leper. So, man, he showed love to a leper. Lepers were made to, like, live outside the city. They got pushed out of the city because they were unclean. And they were not allowed to have any kind of contact. Because leprosy was, like, a commuter, communicable disease. So, basically, if I had it and I go and I touch you, uh, you know, then, like, it's going to get onto your skin and it will start to set in. And it, it was a very, very nasty disease and, like, you know, you, your your fingers and hands and stuff like that stuff would like start to die and would like break off. So like you lose a finger. Um, so, you know, super not a good disease to have. Um, but man, Jesus showed love to that dude, touched him and healed him. Um, and it was super epic. All right. Um, cool. That's, that's the end of our Bible for today. Uh, remember, if you didn't get any of this, uh, go ahead and crank that out. Ooh, there is a backside to this page that is kind of like, almost like a crossword puzzle, but it gives you how many letters. It gives you the word bank down at the bottom, and it even gives you what a couple of the letters are. So here's a hint. If you count how many lines and you count how many letters are in the words at the bottom, you can figure out the answers pretty easy. Uh -huh. All right, cool. So I'll see you in a little bit with a math video. All right, check you guys later.